On the breakfast, uh, World Vision says greenhouse gas emissions and uh, overexploitation of natural resources are the root problem and are causing a rise in global temperatures, uh, drought and others. We will have further discussions on the impact and responses of climate change. Also on the breakfast, amid rising insecurity, former Defence Minister T.Y. Danjima again has asked Nigerians to take up arms and defend themselves against terrorist attack. And don't forget, we'll also go through the front pages of today's national dailies. And of course, so we'll bring to you some analysis with our guest analysts in Off the Press this morning. It's a beautiful Monday morning. We're back with the breakfast of Plus TV Africa. We cannot wait to get into the thick of things and the conversations uh, today. Mercy is already looking uh, like she had a very good weekend. <laughs> I'm looking like I had a uh, very good weekend myself too as well. I hope you did have a good weekend. My name is Kofi Bartels. And Goodbye. I am Messi Bopo. Many thanks for joining us. All right. And uh, of course, um, uh, the election is around the corner, but uh, the important issues of climate and environment uh, something we shouldn't keep our, uh, take our eyes off. We'll be looking at that as we go on the program today. But before we get into the thick of our conversations, let's uh, look at what uh, has been trending in the social space, as we usually do every single morning on this program. Um, uh, the United Arab Emirates is a country that is close to the heart of Nigerians, and most people talk about Dubai, right? Talk about Dubai. In fact, Nigerians are so important to the economy uh, of Dubai in terms of tourism, both pleasure and business, <laughs> that um, you know, the Dubai, you know, uh, tourism, they do a lot of uh, marketing uh, and advertising for Nigerians to go to that country. So it's very important for business, for pleasure. Even uh, presidential candidate, Messi, um, has been living in Dubai for some years. Well, the latest is that uh, what we hear is that the UAE is said to have um, imposed some sort of... Uh, visa ban on uh, Nigerians. Uh, there's a lady who is said to have been sent to jail for posting detained travelers at an airport. It's very worrisome. You can see her there. She put out something on Twitter, which was carried by one of the popular um, um, soft sell, let's say soft sell Twitter uh, accounts, news accounts. Nigerian woman sentenced to one year imprisonment in UAE for tweeting about how Nigerians were illegally detained at Dubai airport. And you can see a statement there. Uh, someone who knows her put out a statement as well. It, it's, it's very, very worrying and very troubling. Um, but we hear that the Dubai authorities or United Arab Emirates as a country have asked Nigerians to uh, no longer apply to come to the country after imposing a total uh, visa ban. This is the latest in the ongoing rift between Nigeria and this all-important uh, Middle East country. Uh, this Nigerian woman, her story was, was shared on Twitter, um, and she posted about her ordeal at the Dubai airport and how other Nigerians and herself had been uh, sent to jail. Mercy, this is a very worrying time, worry, worrying situation, very troubling uh, development to see that uh, um, a fellow human being who just... Uh, put out a statement, something for people to be aware of what they're going through was jailed just because of that. It doesn't sound um, sound um, sound good to the ear. And I, I, I cannot wait to hear what they will say to Abike Dabri on Twitter. <laughs> I hope it will be the trending, the trending segment tomorrow. Well, you can almost predict what would actually happen. But I know how Nigerians have actually responded to uh, what has happened, especially with the back and forth. Uh, it also came out at the time where the UAE is saying, hey, we, we no longer want Nigerians to come and all of that, the ban. And so people are saying, hey, what is all of this? If we fix our country, we have no business having Nigerians uh, grappling. You know, I remember that as of last week, I had a conversation with someone who said, oh, have you ever, uh, you know, uh, been to Dubai? And so that's it. So Dubai feels like, you know, a place that you have to be in the world. And for whatever reason, they have been able to, um, you know, advertise that and made that very prominent. And so it feels like if you've never been to Dubai, then you're left out in all of the travel uh, history. Seriously. <laughs> that's exactly what Ah, you've not been to but, Dubai before. No, that's not the case. No, no, no. I'm, but, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking how people say. 
Mm. You know, it's like if you're not being to the bar, it's like, ah, don't tell anybody. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know so, but, but, but to be but very um, honest, yeah. it is, is a question of when you are in Rome, you need to understand what happens in Rome. You need oh, to understand the dynamics. And if you're remember, in Rome, do as the Romans do. Exactly. So you need to understand <laughs> the dynamics. And, and then I right. remember once upon a time, my grandmother used to tell tales and stories. Mm -hmm. You know, she said that she would tell me a story of all sorts of stories with animals. And so you have, uh, you say, the chicken. When you find it, it gets to a particular <laughs> place. The reason why it has one leg up is that it observes what's going on. Oh, before okay. It can when take the chicken the next stands yes. with one leg. Yeah, ah, so it, it's that is observing and saying what is going on here is watching everyone mm. and trying to understand. And so there's actually a law in the UAE, it's called the UAE Online, uh, where it talks about posting online without a consent that would attract a fine of uh, yeah. 500. I don't know if that's 500,000 dirham. dirham, yes, yeah. and that's it. So uh, it, that's what it is. It's important. So the laws that, because you, you might be in Nigeria, and it, it's a different thing entirely. The laws are different. We have countries that are different. I mean, as a country, uh, countries of the world are sovereign. And so and as such, they have different laws governing their activities. I remember once upon a time we talked about, you know, North Korea and how people are not expected to love if someone dies. Mm. And someone's saying, like, really, does that really happen? I said, yes, it does. And if you live in that climate, you are expected to respect it because these are the laws. So you have laws that actually govern every country. And they might not be the same with, you know, what is obtainable so you're supposed to in your observe, society. observe what the law is in. Yes, you're in, supposed to understand. So okay. before you take, I think that it's important that before you take a trip to another country, you should actually try to find out what are the do's and don'ts, what so, laws. So you expect Abeke Dabre to come out and say, well, you're on your own. You disobey <laughs> the law I of the alarm. I really don't know, but if you look at it, everyone, everyone in Nigeria is reacting differently because, I mean, there's really nothing restricting us. There's no penalty. There's no, uh, you know, judgment. There's no restriction. We also remember how, you know, Twitter was banned and how Nigerians reacted. So there's nothing... Uh, attached to all of that. And we understand the issue of implementation. So it's a big one. So if you are in this part of the climate, then you understand, you're saying, why should someone, because they make a post. And if you look at it, it's, it's inhuman. What, what did she do? Did she commit any crime? But it, there's just a law that does not Someone allow you to call post it something a, a, without... a harmless post. Like. Yes, yes. If you, if you look at it, she was complaining about a plight. And were these issues that she stated really true? Yes, they were really true. But what does the law in UAE talks about posting without consent? And that's what it is. It's quite unfortunate. Yes, yes, it's quite unfortunate. I'll just cap that out by saying, you know, <laughs> you know, it is ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Of course. Um, but but you ask yourself, okay, um, this kind of these kinds of laws where you you want people to take permission before they post, I mean, and you detain them on on account of that, you know, it's um, it's 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 harsh. It's harsh. It's harsh. Um, Nigerians have been through a lot. You know, um, mostly because people who don't know the government will stand up for them. You know, and um, I, do, I do hope that the authorities can work the diplomatic back channels to ensure that this issue is sorted out as quickly as uh, possible. This ban on its own as a whole um, is something that um, they need to look into. I do remember that um, uh, the, the aviation stakeholders, especially owners of airlines like Airpeace, have complained about the treatment of Nigerian, you know, airlines, especially airlines like Airpeace that travel um, to other parts of the world where they're not given the commensurate and the same treatment that the Nigerian hospitality the Nigerian government accommodates and gives to these international airlines from other countries. The Nigerian airlines don't get the same treatment, you know, and um, the arbitrary, you know, ban and lifting of ban and, you know, withdrawal of airline services and all that, um, I think the country needs to have a strong foreign policy. If Nigeria has a strong foreign policy, all right, with respectable, that, that commands respect, you know, from these countries, um, I think things would change for the better. Remember we talked about Qatar and how they had to ask the president to change, um, you know, his, his itinerary uh, because they were having the World Cup and then people said, oh, they've asked him to apply again for visa. You know, that, that, that training story, yeah. You know, maybe if it were some other countries, like South Africa, maybe, I don't know. But definitely the United States, they wouldn't, they wouldn't ever try that. Remember when, um, you know, Queen Elizabeth, blessed memory, was being laid to rest. Um, it, was, it was clear that the Americans were treated differently. I mean, President Joe Biden, when he visited um, that country, he was not put in the same bus 
you know, like all the other presidents, he was given his own motorcade. And I think when it comes to world affairs, you know, even in Africa, Nigeria really, really stands out as a strong country. So as a strong country, you have a strong foreign policy that will command respect and would determine how people treat you. You know, but we, we, have, we have to move on to our next our next trending story. All right, so on our next trending story, it's uh, something that a lot of people have reacted differently. A truck driven, or a truck was driven by uh, a Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, that's last small official, that caused an accident while driving against traffic uh, in Ikeja, that's in Lagos. And that happened on Saturday. <laughs> I see, it wasn't at the same time I was at that, at that particular uh, location, though. Uh, <laughs> but it was unfortunate before, you know, I got to that particular area. You know, it's, and, and you know like the thing like, is, <laughs> and, uh, the, the thing <laughs> is, is that it's called the anti one way, right? Anti -one -way. Oh my God. So you know, anti, it's just an entire funny, totally funny story. <laughs> but I'm told we are, we are directors of tells we have a track up. So let's just listen to that. We're all the tape and we'll be back. Oh well, it's just a, a typical example of what people would say. That's what actually transpired. Uh, so you have a vehicle that was driven. I mean, I don't really like it how some people report some some uh, medium print mm -hmm. medium report that you know. So it was uh, an official. Was driving a last. <laughs> no, you have to say it the way it is. Uh, it's, it's, it's anti one way. Hmm. That's it. You see, the, that's anti one way. So it means that anti one way Lasma drove against traffic. What an irony. Yes. How, how do you explain? That's what you call a uh, typical. If you're looking for an example of an irony, hmm. that's what it is. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. It, it, it's quite, quite unfortunate to see to see that uh, the officials, government officials, the government offices, the people who, you know, should be, uh, um, should be protecting the law, you know, keeping the law, are the lawbreakers. Look at that. Auntie when we boldly written in front and went and smashed, smashed someone's vehicle, you know. I, I'm waiting to hear what last month officials will say about this, how they're going to deal with those who um, uh, are, are concerned. I hope that... The, the rumors that are flying around, even before I came to Lagos, uh, that they picked that bell rose to, to be in last month is not true. You know, because people who are trained and people who are properly equipped you know, for their job um, are not meant to behave like this. You know, it's, it, it is not, it's uncalled for. It's a shame. It's a funny one. I've, we've had a good laugh. And uh, kudos to whoever filmed this. You know, but mercy. We see several times when the police officials drive against traffic for no just they don't have any reason you know is it police is it vips we keep hearing that the government has announced that oh uh, uh police escort should be drawn from vips but we both know that is not true that is just an old wife's fable that is what you call super story <laughs> eh? should we sing the song for them no time no you know so so it's it's, it's just um a, a capturing how how upside down things are you know, in, in this country. You see, this is a, a mug. It's meant to be like this. But in Nigeria, the mug is like this. You know what I'm saying? You, so, you partially, so, you partially you know, just... You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you just did, but... but I finished my coffee already. <laughs> <laughs> I finished my coffee already. I couldn't... I really I, yeah. Don't try it, because you might, might just spill the coffee. No, no, so quickly yeah. now. Yeah, so, so, so you see police officers all the time, mercy, all the time, driving against traffic. Police, let's leave LASMA out of this. That's the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency Authority. You see police officers driving against traffic all the time. Military officers in convoy, all right? Most times, they're they are, they are escorting a VIP who probably does not even have a government position. It's probably just one big boy, somebody who has money to hire them, you know? In parts of the Niger Delta, where I worked for several years, you know what they do? They escort um, expatriates. 
These are expatriates who work in oil and gas sector. Maybe probably people who do not even have qualifications that you have. And you know what they do? When they're driving against traffic, they take out their whip, cane, or belt, and they start flogging people out of the way. They could smash your car uh, side mirror. And this, uh, this is uh, you know, the, the evidence of a dysfunctional society. Things are, are not right. And the mm. people who are meant to be protecting the law are the ones are breaking. breaking the law. Now, Kofi, quickly, just before you come in with the next top trending, it's, it's, you know, it reminds me of the lyrics of Fela, you know, very, very legendary Fela mm. that says, teacher, not teach me nonsense. Oh, That's exactly God. what That's it is. Perfect. And um, just as we're also talking about the fact that you have the anti one, where we also need to understand what the BRT lane is meant for, why it was created. Uh, another question, you know, that we should be asking is, uh, do you have the boss, you know, so that particular boss, the staff boss, what business were you actually doing on that particular part? You know, I don't know. I'm just asking, mm -hmm. do you think that you're supposed to be on that part? So we, we live, it, it feels like we're a lawless society where we have a lot of laws. And funnily, it's that when you leave, you move outside of this country, you find out that Nigerians are very law abiding. Nigerians outside of Nigeria are law abiding. And so when Nigerians are in Niger, they're, they're lawless. So what exactly could be the problem? I'm sure it would be a conversation that, you know, Kofi would like to have some other time. You, uh, Kofi yes. and I would like yeah, to Yes, have. indeed. And of course, um, it crashed into a staff. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a chaotic situation. But um, let's move on, Mercy. Uh, this next one, it's, it's, it's a bitter story, but has a funny aspect to it because... Funny? It has little of a funny aspect to it. Yeah, it has a funny... Because yesterday, I, I analyzed it with my wife. <laughs> you know, and she was livid. And I think a lot of women who, who hear this story also go crazy and go mad about it. So picture this. A video came out circulating on social media of a man sitting at the back of what looked like a, a pickup truck holding scissors and cutting, snapping and cutting the top. A, a lady wearing like a singlet kind of top, all right? And cutting it and cutting it and like stripping her naked. What happened? We had to dig deeper to realize that this was, you can see it there, a uh, senior lecturer, mercy, senior lecturer, oh, at least not an uh, uh, assistant lecturer or trainee le senior lecturer at the Federal University Lafia, Nassau State. His name is Dr. Fred Ayokai, all right? You can see the girl there who is cutting her top with the scissors. There's another video of them beating up this girl in her apartment, all right? Um, they said this girl, you know, I mean, I saw the video. I was wondering what was going on. Why would this man do such a thing? And it's heinous. They stripped her naked, left her on the road. But we now saw the other video where the girl, he was, you know, brutalizing and, you know, and uh, um, uh, uh, he was abusing, was beating his daughter. All right. Now, what happened? This girl saw that the daughter of this lecturer had her boyfriend's number on her phone and was chatting with the boyfriend. So she, with some friends, they accosted the lecturer's daughter and they beat her up. You know, so if you watch the first video, you have to watch the first video to understand the Kofi, second I've video. I've seen all the videos. You've seen it, right? <laughs> you see how they were beating her. Delayed the number. Delayed the number. Delayed the number. You know, and it was a bit funny to me because you know, I, I read the story and saw the boy's name is IG. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was telling my wife that, you know, um, uh, are you sure we, we won't be disappointed when we see the IG they're fighting over? <laughs> <laughs> and so she was, um, she, was, she was angry, just as I was, when we saw the, fe the second video of the lecture doing what he did. Very, very, very utterly condemnable. But she grew more angry, and I don't know if it's, it's maybe a lady thing, grew more angry when she saw the first video. But she grew more angry when she saw the first video. You know, and said, why would you go fighting your fellow man over a man? Mm. You know, and then she was wondering, okay, is it that the, uh, this is just as they came back from Asu Strike, this is what they came to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as they came back from Asu Strike, you know, like, why would, and then I said, oh, maybe you see the guy they're fighting over, you might be disappointed. <laughs> His name is IG. IG. You know, I, 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 I <laughs> <laughs> so she, she was beating her. They, she beat her seriously. But, 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 but you know, you know I, I mean, it was, I, I just hope that girl is okay. Because when they went back to exact revenge on her, sorry, Mercy, mm. they, they, they beat her, 
you know, yeah, yeah, I, I saw the you video. saw when she hit the lovers, the lover blades. My, I'm not sure I saw that part. Oh man. No, but but, but so this that's is, the story. As uh, so, I see. Uh, you know, I understand. You know where you're coming from, and from your explanation, it can be very hilarious. But to be, but it's really saddening. It's really saddening how our society and values. Let's not begin to sound that you know Nigeria should be an exception from what's happening in the, you know across the world because someone will say, "Come on, these things happen even outside of Nigeria." But I, I know that um, if you want to look at it, first of all, we have uh, a way of life, even though it has not been incorporated, and a lot of people do not accept that. And so one would say that Nigeria as a country has uh, we, we live in a communal space, some sort of communal living. And that's why then it would be easy for you to reprimand another man. If I find your child acting out of order, I would probably just you know, try to correct and say, that's hey, it. That's, that's the that's, 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 that's the nature of the Yes, that's the kind mm. of, you know, culture and country that I grew up in. And I understand. It's also, you know, surprising the kind of country, you know, the way I, I don't understand. It was so difficult for them to tell anyone that your parents, that you had a boyfriend. Not to even talk about the fact that your parents will mm. now go with you to, go know, and to beat, beat up someone. Someone who beat you because of your because of, you of, know, so, of man. So I'm, I'm just understanding. <laughs> and it's not yeah, even yeah, yeah. anyone. It's even a lecturer. Yeah. So I started asking myself, what a generation. We yeah. are deteriorating. But I, have time. you thought about it Messi, this way? That the parent may look for his own way to deal with the child. Later, but to hear that someone played a hand. Um, oh, no. On his child, I, may say, I, I know some parents who. I'm, I'm not justifying it, Kofi, I, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just to answer your question. I'm, you know, just to respond to your point, that um, why would the parents not even, you know, look at the fact that the daughter is having a relationship with a man? I know some parents who, if a teacher just does as little as lays a finger on their child, they will go to the school and attempt to burn it down. Kofi, we don't live in a jungle, mm -hmm. and even though yeah, we so, know so that... So parents we, we, sometimes, we, we, the instinct, we, the first instinct is... No, but, but that's, that's child. enough. I mean, my child. So it's, it's not even a case of... We understand that these things would probably ha happen amongst girls, and these things will, will probably happen amongst, uh, you know, teenage children. I'm looking at them. I can't... I could probably say they're young adults. Okay, so it's normal. So that's what fight. I'm saying. No, I'm just saying that, that these things are normal. One would actually not expect... You would say that... Typical of a Nigerian or an African parent would say, you know what, go back and beat that girl up. Why would so, 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 someone was saying, so, is, saying someone that, says, you know, normal, is it normal, normal girl fight? Like I, I don't know if it's normal because I don't, I don't see myself. I've never seen myself, you know, in that situation you were, where you, you were saying it's normal. So I was, uh, because yeah. I think that, you know, at the end of the day, if you look at the culture from all of the experiences and things that have happened over time, you would say that these things actually happen, okay. right? With younger Girls. people, young adults, I, I saw someone people. saying somewhere. But how, but yeah. how then? My, my concern is that, yes, I understand that somebody touched your daughter. She's somebody you come as a way. So, so that little girl beats you and you're beat her back a bit. Come beat her back. You ah. know, that's all. No wonder. Because someone was saying, so, 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 someone saying, in the case that the parent is, is, had to is, step is, in. So I'm already thinking from the dimension that once upon mm. a time, it was almost impossible for you. You have to hide and be very discreet about, you know, any relationship you're having with the opposite sex. And not to be, you know, very comfortable that your parent, an elite, I mean, he's a lecturer. But, uh, but he I'm, should, I'm, should know better. Yeah. Taking the laws into his hand is not it. And if you feel that your child has been harassed, that's why I say we don't live in a jungle. That's why we have the government. That's why we have a system. As much as we say that a lot of people have described this country as a, they say, oh, it's a banana republic. Anything goes, anything happens. But you see, we also have a part and a role to play in ensuring that this is not a banana republic. When you have, you know, struck, you can't wake up and say the police will not do anything. Go lodge a complaint if you, if you think that that's a threat. But I feel very disappointed. It's yes. totally disappointing so, 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 and so, very bizarre yeah. and embarrassing. Yes. So, so more information, he's been arrested, of course, with of his course. daughter. You know, I, I, I followed a legal, you know, blog where they said, you know, he could face up to 20 years because you have attempted murder you see the way they beat her up and kidnapping as, as far as a lot of other things and uh, what I heard was so that even the person with the, with the phone was filming everything is an accomplice by oh, law why not you know <laughs> so next next time if someone you know slaps you you go report to the police don't don't take the law into your hands That's it's it. unfortunate and I hope that uh, he faces a full penalty um, but please please let's stop uh, Fighting over men. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not worth it. <laughs> I don't know why you're feeling so great with that. I, wish, I hope we can see the picture of the guy tomorrow. We have to go. We have to go. We, we definitely have yes, to go. We'll, we'll uh, be right back after this break. <laughs> Stay with us.